Hey guys, it's Eric from D in the Garage, and welcome to another episode of The Build of Barney, The Jeep That Just Won't Die. Brought you into my garage today because we're going to do some bench work on my brake portioning valve. I'm going to explain what the brake portioning valve is, explain how to clean it, and show you how to uh, modify it for all these great people who want to change their Jeeps to have rear discs. There's something that people really miss out on doing and end up might end up having a problem under heavy braking. For me, this is an issue because I do some stuff with my Jeep that requires heavy braking, like trailing, like plowing, like having weight in the car. I carry salt all the time. Heavy braking means that I need to make sure my brake system's pushing the pressure in the proper points. So, a brake portion that ah, brake proportioning valve is actually what it kind of says. It proportions the pressure between the front and rear brakes. So there's a series of valves in here that actuate back and forth on, on spring pressure and push fluids out the lines depending on your load of braking. Now, when it comes to drum brakes, it basically pushes a lot more pressure to the back under heavy load. That's because drum brakes tend to need more pressure to actually get the car to stop. Just think about it is that you have two pieces of steel pushing out onto one piece of steel or ceramic pads shoes more like it pushing out in the one seal if you're pushing out this way it's gonna be a lot harder to stop it than trying to grab it like a caliber this way so <laughs> that's why they need proportioning valves now a lot of proportioning valves nowadays are fed into or driven by the ABS pump on my ZJ it was and now the pressure still flow through there properly but an ABS pump just modulates it to make sure you don't lock up your tires that's pretty much what this is. Basically, flows the pressure between the front and rear brakes to make sure that you can stop your vehicle properly. Now, the modification you need to do to, for anyone that's decided to go rear disc in their Jeep, meaning ZJ or XJ, and probably even TJ or Wrangler, um, I think they'll all use the same proportioning valve, and what you have to do is pull out, I believe it's this side, and remove an O-ring from the inside. Now, I'm going to show you how to take it apart and clean it. Because on my 93, I put all new brake lines on last winter. And when I went to go bleed the system, I couldn't get any fluid to the rear. And I believe it was because, well, actually I know, but it was because my proportioning valve was junked up with bad, cruddy fluid. Um, my lines are rusted, so back filled in. What was that noise? <laughs> okay. It backfilled in to my portioning valve and even to some of my, my reservoir. Now, <clears throat> I decided on my, one night, because I couldn't get to the yard, to pull mine apart and clean it. And it actually fixed it. So for you folks that seem like they're not getting pressure or they're not getting enough pressure to the rear, you might just need to take this apart and clean it. So let's just fart first take off, break, getting all the lines off. And then um, getting the valves off, and I'm going to show you what I did to clean it. All right, let's go. Okay, guys, I'm going to need a couple tools right now. It seems like I need about a 14 inch wrench to get my lines off, and I'll see what we need for when I need to get the valves out and clean them out. Now, I'm doing this on my junkyard one um, just because I actually pulled the spare just in case I needed it. I am actually going to repeat this later in the Jeep, and I'll kind of give you a quick speed through walkthrough when I do that over there um, one tip and trick I say is use what you got in front of you Doug taught me this and it's all over YouTube project farm did a test on it um, you can actually use brake fluid as a penetrating oil to break up um, rust and crud that's on your lines and that's what I'm gonna do right now because God gave me and it's sitting right in front of me I'm just using a screwdriver and a little bit on there because you don't need a lot you just need a little bit yeah, just enough to get 
on the threads and let it seep down. Probably could have used a little something else, but that's what I had. And I got a little rag here. Let's see if that works. So I can just get a little bit and drip it on. Yeah, that seems to work. All right. Now, I would suggest if you're doing this in your Jeep, in the um, on the, actually on the car, I would get your line wrench. Uh, I'm just using my regular 14, and we're just gonna try to get it broken loose like that. Now, I'm only doing this to show you that you want to take it out of your car and do it properly to clean it. So, I'm just gonna do it to all these guys. And we'll move on. Also want to make note, that sensor you see here, this guy, be very careful with that. I ended up, um, and I'll show you later, breaking that somehow, the seal, there's an internal seal on it, or just the O-ring, I don't know. Um, and it, I had leaking fluid and air getting in through that. I managed to find um, an actual, this stop there. It's a, uh, it basically, I capped it off here just for the fact that they don't want to lose any more fluid or brake fluid. So um, that's actually a different size. So let's see about these guys. But be careful working around that. Unplug it and make sure it's like not you're not going to hit it and take it out gently. Now originally when I actually had this problem in my 93, I thought it was due to the fact that um, my brake booster was bad or I had a crack line in my fitting and then I found out later on it was not. Uh, it work. Uh, you know what? It might not be a 14. I think I'm just making the 14. No, it's a 14. That fits snug. It's just got rust. Sorry for the shaking. You're on my cart and my cart shakes. Now one part people forget to lube when they're trying to remove brake lines is actually this part. This is where it usually actually breaks and rusts because a little bit of moisture gets in here and then you can't, it just seizes it shut. Then you go to twist the line out and you can't because you're snapping your line. Don't forget to lube right here. Like mine's already loose, but there's a little bit like, well, there you go. A little bit like that. And that will really, if you want to really penetrate and really get the line out without breaking stuff, that's a really good tip right there. Now, like I said, I'm only doing this because I modified mine. Not modified. I modified my brake system on my Jeep. And I modified it by taking away my drum brakes. As you saw in the beginning with my beautiful pyrotechnics, I um, decided to get rid of my drum brakes and put on disc brakes. Now, a lot of people ask, how do, I, how do I do a disc brake conversion? Want to know the simple answer? Just go to get a rear diff. I may eventually show you actually how to do it on my spare D30 that's back there, D35, just so you can see what you actually needs to be done. But it's honestly easier just to go get a diff. All right, now we're going to get one of the valves out. We're going to start with the back side. Probably like a 17. Now I suggest doing this with line wrenches, if you can. Not a 17, 16, 16. Okay. Just so that you can keep the hexagonal shape. So you can actually see, look, if see how that's dark? That's how mine was. Like dark and dirty fluid. If you bring this closer. You can see it right there, how dark and dirty it is. And that's the valve I think we're going to be removing. Just give me a moment. I might get the other side out. Can I have more fluid in my hand to show you? No. But this is why I end up cleaning mine out. Uh, because over time it just deteriorated. Now some of you might be asking what this black nozzle is. Guess what it is. Hold on. Leader valve. Which seems actually have fluid in it for some reason. So any of you folks out there that were trying to bleed their um, master cylinder or beginning of your brake system, you can start right there. Now this, I believe, is a 19. Oh, I'm wrong. It's not a 19. 
It might be a 20 then? I don't know. Yeah, 21 should do. Now, you really want to just take it all apart nice and slow. There we go. Okay, that was on a little pressure. Now you can see that. Look how dirty that is. That's no good. You want yours to be nice and clean. So let me move some tools here. And actually, that's the valve I want. So, is it the valve? Look, that's that's what you're you're trying to bleed through your system. That's no good. So usually I just start off by getting my rag and cleaning it and keeping an eye on how these things come apart and go back together. So like this one, one like this. So for any folks that are trying to do this by my video, let's go over here. So it's going to be like this on the Jeep, I believe. Yeah, it's going to be like this on the Jeep. So this is the front and that one in like that. So you take that apart, pull it out, and then you're going to want to try to take this out. And I used snap ring pliers to get that out last time. Hmm. Let's get this sensor out first. So I don't want to break that. I might need that down the road. So this sensor, as you know, is, has this little probe on it, and it sits on the valve in there. And once um, it detects a loss in pressure, you can, it feels it travel and then sets off your ABS light. So it will actually come down when you move the valve, but when it loses pressure and it moves one way, too much one way, it will activate your ABS light on the dash, which I didn't know until I actually started taking this apart. So let's see if I can get it out now. These are not the ones I used last time. I remember I got very nervous taking it apart. So, I'm actually shooting this now um, to see if I can help get that one part out. Because it's just really crudded up in there. And sometimes you might not be able to rebuild it. And they're actually really hard or expensive to find brand new. Um, So let's see if I can get it now. I got some of the crud out. Put it here. Lock it in. There we go. See, I got it. Yep, okay. So, and see, that's why I want to pull it out. I want to rub it down. Try not to get a lot of brake clean. Like, don't do what I did. Don't get a lot of brake clean on these gaskets. They will swell up. I would say get it out and wipe that those down with a rag. And then just shoot it out with brake clean. Let it dry. You can see it's... All it is... Is this... This... Where'd the spring go? Spring was right here. Well, the spring is somewhere here. No, it is because I didn't put it anywhere else. Just me being a dummy. But anyways, that's all it is. It's got this over here. And this side. And this side. Better repetition. This is actually how... Oh, sorry. I'm trying to see how this goes. Okay, that's how, actually how it sits in your Jeep. So this one goes over here, and this one goes over here with the spring at the top of it. And let's clean all these things out. You wanna get all the dirt out, and then put it all back together. Now, for those of you waiting for the modification part of this, we're gonna to go to the Jeep and do it really quick. Essentially, all you need to do is take this guy off. And that's a modification that should stop the 50-50 from what I was told. From what I was told on the lines, you know, we all trust those form things. So, put that on and see what happens. 
Um, you're probably going to have to bleed your brakes after you do it. And, um, yeah. I'll put a link in the description below of the thing I'm using to do the uh, mod on. And uh, we'll go from there. Alrighty, guys. I'm going to take my handy-dandy tool. And let's do this. Right, guys. Now, after rereading my thing, some people's justice is uh, English, not metric. Let's correct this now. This side is the 13 16 the actual, I uh, guess, the bleeder nut. And then I'm using 15 16 Maybe Maybe three quarter will fit. Three quarter fit. Ah, three quarter fits nicely, actually. Sorry, I reversed that. <laughs> Dummy here. So it's 13 16 yeah, 13 16 on the bleeder nut and a three quarter here. So let's just go for it. Now he said to watch out that spring could pop. So I'm just doing it nice and slow. It springs under pressure that's in there. I showed you before. And we're just going to slowly back it out so I can catch it all. Expecting brake fluid to spray everywhere at this point. Eh, not everywhere, but it's dripping. All right, just to show you, that's the brake fluid that came out of my uh, portion valve. It's nice and clean, unlike what we saw before. So now we're just going to take this out. And they say all you got to do is remove this o ring and you put it back in. So. That's all we're going to do. Take that O-ring and you should get better equal pressure to all the components in your braking system. So this, just take your time. Now I said before guys, I didn't need to get a new portion valve. I got a spare just because I didn't know if that was going to work when I cleaned it. But cleaning it worked. Now screwing this back in was, I remember, a little nerve wracking because it's under pressure. So just take your time, get those first couple threads started, and you're good to go. There you go. Get her nice and snug, and then find a partner to bleed your brakes. Help from using the right side. Yep. And believe it or not, I already lost that stupid O-ring because I put it on over there. It's right here. Nah, stupid me. All right, and that is how you modify your proportioning valve for if you did a rear disc conversion. Um, I hopefully it works. I'll give you a real update on it later on if it works or not. And that's about it, guys. That's how you clean your proportioning valve if it's junked up and clogged up. And that's how you uh, modify if you put rear disc on. Pretty clean and simple on that one. So here's another episode of build of Barney so if you guys are liking it hit that like button below comment below subscribe you know do what you got to do to keep us going on this channel um the next episode I think I'm gonna be bringing you a track bar hopefully I'm gonna try to get that done this weekend so any people want to learn how to do an adjustable track bar under your Jeep keep tuned for next uh, episode anyways I'll catch you guys later